Hello and welcome back to Tony Dock Station. So, as you can see here, before the end of my last video, I was telling you about the incline. And as you can see, that is now all glued and finished. I did completely smother it with PVA glue. So, it actually looks like it's not dried, but that is, it's just I've soaked it quite, quite heavily in glue and it's just sort of dried, dried that uh, that white crust on it but that's going to be ballasted over anyway so it's just a place to hold the track down and it's held quite well and then when I ballast that and decorate that you won't see any of that so that's that obviously all I need to, to do is put in the rest of the cosmetic sleepers and um, then that will all be all be finished so I've now received my order of point motors or in this case point solenoid solenoids sorry I can't talk I um, managed to get these for three ninety nine each, and as I needed twenty five of them, um, or twenty six rather, I was looking for the best possible price because that alone came to just over a uh, hundred pound. I think it was if I remember this right. So it's twenty five in there, um, and I've got another one over here. I'm now going to talk through how I'm going to be going about this. So things you're going to need. First thing here is optional. But I decided to go with this and I'll explain why later. These are called capacitor discharge units. Um, and a few people use these. Although I found these at a model railway show, I actually managed to get these both for eight pound each. So that was quite a bargain. I couldn't resist picking them up because on the internet they're going for about sort of 11, 12 pounds each. So this is gonna be a good little thing and I'll explain why. Uh, the obvious next thing you're gonna need is a soldering iron, solder, a bit of flux and a helping hand and I would definitely recommend a helping hand you get them for a few quid and they are a godsend and then wiring this is 16 slash 02 gauge wire so it's 16 strands of 0.2 millimeters uh, whip we've got some various colors in red and green um, green probably going to be just for the frog wire but it doesn't matter what color it is obviously you can choose any color just might make it easier when you're wiring it up to know where different colored wires doing different things um, you're going to need some switches and these are momentary switches so the center is off and you flip them one way and they will release back to the center so they're momentary on and off and they go both ways so I'm doing this one handed um, I managed to pick these up on eBay for I think about 80p each um, let's bring it under the light see if you can see it better so it sees it's on off on um, that's the thing there and I don't know if it's got a part number no it hasn't um, if I can remember where I got them from I'll put a link um, but you can pick these up almost anywhere um, <coughs> excuse me um, I've got some thicker gauge wire which is 32 slash uh, 02 I think um, if I'm wrong I'll put an amendment in the, uh, the video now this is going to be my bus wire uh, I got a bit more red and black and I've just got um, some blue and yellow because I was originally going to plan to run a separate bus wire there's a different colour so like accessories and switches under that and this just to be my main DCC bus obviously that still needs to be doing um, and then some more 16 slash 02 um, so I've got enough wire to sort of make up my switches you're obviously going to need the actual switch itself um, and for mainly for the bus wire I'm using these uh, crimp splices so you literally to join wires together without soldering them you put them in there one in or from the other side or both in and then you literally fold that over and you crimp it and then that blade goes between the wires without cutting them so it's not very well focused and they'll just join the wire um, I've also got some chop blocks and some various crimp blades and splices um, and just some electrical tape so those are the various bits you're going to need so what I'll do now is I'll talk through the wiring and what each bit does um, so a lot of people have gone through this um, in fact, I'll bring this under a bit of light and I'll make it easier a lot of people on the internet have gone through this but um, just in case you're not familiar with it and I'm going to talk through uh, how, how to go about it and as I said this capacitor discharge unit is optional so instead of running if you're not going to use these you've got your main power input 12 volt dc you would just bypass this so they would just carry on straight there so if you imagine if you're not using the cdu your positive and negative starts here 
Um, if you are going to use the CDU, in particular the Gauge Master ones, which seems to be what most people use, but there are others available. The recommended input is 16 volts AC. The maximum is 25 volts AC. However, you can use a varied amount of uh, voltages and currents as it is quite um, simple electronics. So, uh, and a lot of people use 12 volt DC and have reported no problem, so that's what I'm gonna use because I've got a 12 volt DC output on the back of an old controller. So that's what I'm gonna use. So save me buying a new power source. If it works, don't fix it. Um, so your power comes in and this one here is the positive and we'll go up to your switch. Now, this is your switch here. There's three little terminals. So the middle one is your constant power in, and then either side is whichever way you decide to uh, flip the switch. So if you're going that way, it will open up the bottom terminal. And if you're going up the top, I can't do this one-handed, sorry. It will open up the top terminal. And that will throw your switch either way. So on the actual point motor, you've got various terminals. I'm going to just grab a natural motor, which you can hopefully see there. No, uh, lettered A, B, C, D, E, F, B. Sorry, A, C, D, E, F, B. Um, and that's what you, you're soldering onto there. A and B are your two switch positions, basically. Whether it's that way or that way. And that's why you have one terminal of the switch going to A and have a terminal switch going to B. So that will throw the switch either side. C is your common negative. So obviously you've got power coming in through the switch, diverting this say through to A, and then to complete circuit, it comes out through C and back into your negative. And if it, you're switching the switch the other way, power comes in, out this way, into B, and out through C. And that is without using uh, DCC or frogs, that is how a standard PM2 switch would work. Um, you don't have D, E and F. So that is literally simply it. If you want to do it the simple way, power in to the centre of the switch, and then one to A, one to B, and whichever way you throw it, power will go into those terminals and then out through C into your negative. And it's quite simple circuitry and a lot of people can do this quite easily. <coughs> now, if you're using DCC and want to have your electrofog points, this is where D, E and F come in. Now, your DCC feed, excuse my terrible handwriting, your positive and your negative go to D and E. Um, I've been led to believe it doesn't matter which way round they go as long as it's constant so you can decide which one is which. Um, and then obviously depending on which rail is positive or negative on your layout and the rotation of the switch. So if it's going to be, say, that way, you need to make sure your positive and negative are the same way as your rails. And vice versa, if you put in the switch that way, you need to make sure the positive and negative are on those uh, the correct rails as well. I hope that makes sense. So say for example, if we're doing it this way, D would go to this rail and E would go to this rail. And it would be the other way around, you'd have D going to the top rail and E going to the bottom rail. And whichever is positive or negative. <coughs> so that's how that works. And then inside the actual switch, in fact, if you bear me one moment, I'm actually just going to take this out. So here's the actual uh, seat motor. Now I've got D and E there. And all this does is, if you look on the actual uh, switch there, you see there's a little spring and a contact like washer. And that, depending on which way the switch is thrown, at the moment it's contacting D, and if it's thrown the other way, it will contact E, with the brake in the middle, so they won't ever be connected the same. And then what that does at the back, sorry, is that then completes the circuit with that uh, rail at the bottom there. That then goes round and under and goes out to F. There. So all you're doing by throwing the switch is making a 
bridge between either D and F or E and F. And what that is doing is basically connecting your positive to F if it's thrown in D and if it's thrown over it will connect the negative to F. So that enables you to run the required either positive or negative DCC feed to the point frog, uh, to the frog on the point rather. So if I grab a point, <coughs> do you remember from, this is just an old one, from the old uh, previous video, this is the frog here, we ran a wire out so that this area of the rail is uh, connected to that wire. As I explained before, it can either be positive or negative. So that's why you need to make sure the orientation of the switch is correct because you don't want to throw positive when that needs negative and vice versa, you don't want to throw negative when it needs positive. So I hope that explains the electrics a little bit. Um, as I said, there are various explanations out there. So if that didn't make sense to you for whatever reason, um, <coughs> excuse me, if that didn't make sense to you for whatever reason, then um, there are a few other people out there that have explained it maybe in a more clearer or a different way to me. But hopefully that makes sense. I would also recommend just drawing this out, even if you're familiar with it, because then when you are underneath the, the baseboards and wiring things up and you get a little bit lost, or you know, it might you know have a momentary lapse in forgetting what goes where. Sometimes it's easier just to refer back to a diagram rather than having to scratch your head and chase wires and think so I'd recommend just drawing something simple like that out so that you've always got something to refer to when you're wiring these up even if you're not doing the whole DCC route and you're just doing the simple ACB switch sometimes it's it's a good idea um, but that's that's just what I'm going to be doing okay so the first thing to do is uh, just put a bit of flux across all the points um, I do recommend this because it will make the soldering a lot easier it just enables the solder to flow then what you want to do is just tin a tiny little bit on the terminals, like a very, very small amount. And then you're going to tin the end of the wire so that then what you do is you, um, once they're both tinned, you heat that together, put the wire on, and the solder between the two will merge and it'll be a very quick solder. Okay, so there is one finished uh, soldering for the first point motor. So <coughs> let me just recap. Which one's a which? I say I've colour coded it just to make it easier. So the two red ones, either side, A and B, go to the switch either side. The black one goes down into the negative, whether it's your CDU or just the negative of your 12 volt supply. The yellow, sorry, the green is the frog. And that goes up to the point motor. And the blue, yellow, are the positive and negative for your DCC. So you can see what I mean about colour coding, it might make it a bit easier. But if you haven't got access to all different colour wires, then definitely follow your diagram before you start wiring it up under the under the board. But yes, yeah, so that's one finished soldered. I'm not a very good solderer, but as long as they're all well and truly on there. And you can even possibly put a bit of heat shrink up underneath just to sort of seal these and prevent any short circuits. So that's another option if your soldering is as atrocious as mine. Okay, so with it all soldered, it comes to now fixing the motors to the baseboard. Now, there's not a exact way to do this. However, the one thing you have got to do is make sure that they are perfectly lined up so that uh, the, the motor throws. So it's a bit hard for me to actually film and show you at the same time. And it's pretty dark under here. Um, but what I've done, as you can see, this one's been fixed. What I do is I put the motor underneath and line it up and throw the, the actual point and make sure it moves uh, smoothly. Then just take a, a pen or a pencil and I don't know if you can actually see it, it's pretty dark, but I just then mark um, some with pen or pencil where the uh, the holes are for the screws. 
and then take a drill just per pilot hole and then when you put the motor in underneath it will then go exactly lined up where you need it to be um, and then screw it in that's so what I've done once I've installed the motor made sure that it's lined up is I just rig it up to like this test system um, so I've just completed the circuit without the DCC side just the normal DC current connected it up to the switch and then just to make sure it actually throws you can hear it buzz in there hopefully and throw in so literally just making sure that the motor throws and that when it does it's throwing all the way over okay so apologies about the angle um but so just giving you a final look at this uh, ignore these two wires they're the, the bus wire so as you can see i put the motors in now um and they throw no problems I've also connected it up to the test rig just to throw them and they're fine. These all throw over nicely. So what I'm gonna do now is carry on fixing these up and then I'll talk through about how to wire the uh, these wires up. At the moment, I've got three down, 23 more to go. Okay, so it's the next day um, and I've ever so slightly changed how I'm doing these. Um, I was using the smallest screws I could find because I was clever enough to decide to use a nine mil plyboard for my base, which meant screwing the seeps underneath up into the board meant finding a screw that was shorter than nine mil to uh, prevent it protruding through the baseboard. Um, the shortest I could find was 12 mil, like that was readily available, um, which I did try, which was these, and they are sort of round-headed, 3.5 by 12, um, and they were just ever so slightly too big. They 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 have worked, but I wasn't comfortable in using them for the rest of the board. So I did a bit of research and I ended up buying these from B and Q, which are three by ten and they're countersunk which means which means I think it's ten mil from the tip of the head to the tip of the nail which means it's the the countersink part is going to stop it going uh, all the way flush with the circuit board and then I'm obviously making sure I'm not screwing them too tight because otherwise that will break the circuit board but then that gives me uh, the short enough length to not protrude through the baseboard um, and I found that they actually go in a lot easier uh, and it's a lot easier to line up as well. Um, the other thing I've done is the holes that I was drilling for the point motors was using an 8mm bit and it was just, I mean it was fine, it was enough for him to throw the switch but I found that it could probably do with moving just a little bit more either way just to allow the contacts on the electrofrog part of the circuit to to make do. So as you can see there, short of actually ripping all the points up and going again, which I really didn't want to do, I am um, countersunk just through, so not all the way, so that's why there's still a bit of a lip there. Countersunk and then just took a 12 mil drill bit just to extend it. Now you can see that the the hole of the point motor I don't know if you can actually see it, but it, it probably should be is there. Um, clears, and then it's this deeper bit just gives a little, bit more room for the pin to throw over a lot more. And I've just done it with that point motor there. I've just tested that, and that throws uh, a lot further. It goes all the way. And there's still a bit of a gap there, but again, I don't know if you can see it, the angle isn't very good, but it is still making contact when it goes both ways. So I would recommend to begin with, go to 12 mil 
when drilling these holes unless you're willing to rip the points up and drill from the top down because drilling underneath you do risk going too far and damaging the actual point underneath which is why I'm countersinking first and then only pushing the drill bit as far as the countersink goes um, and I found that that works quite well. So I'm going to continue doing the rest of these that way. Um, okay, so it's still a bit of a mess under here, but I've finished putting in all the point motors for this side of the baseboard. Again, it's quite messy up top. You can see we've got the, uh, the rods in. I'm not going to trim them down until I've got every single point motor in, wired up to the control panel, tested, working and run loads and loads of times just in case I do need to change any of this. However, what I have been doing as well is um, uh, I did start by putting the motors in with the point all the way to one side and then all the other way. But what I've started doing, which works, was putting the, the motor centre, the point centre and sort of holding, holding them just by putting a bit of cork either side and centering the motor which is uh, what I found out that you actually should do to begin with anyway. And then I found I'm actually getting a, a better range of motion and a much more smoother range of motion as well. Some of them are quite sticky, but they were the points were seemed to be like that before I put the motor in. However, each motor I've installed, I've tested with like a little test rig. So I'm just using the 16-volt uh, uh, AC output into the capacitor discharge unit and then just through to a, just a, a very crudely soldered switch. You know, I've just put a chop block on the end of two red and a uh, uh, return of common, neutral, whatever you want to call it. And then just chop block them into each motor and then just throw in the switch loads of times just to make sure it does change with no problems and doesn't stick at all. Um, and every motor does, does move quite freely. Um, the capacitor discharge unit does help with the sticky motors on sticky points um, as it gives it a little bit of an extra boost with power as well. So yeah, I'm quite happy that I'm going the right way with all these and they've all got motors in, or points, solenoids, whatever you want to call them. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of the table, do all the way around. I won't show you me doing all that because it's probably going to take some time and I might not even finish it before I post this video anyway um, and then I've uh, I'll start wiring them up um, I have you may have already noticed I've already run the main DCC bus wire um, and then I've got a yellow and blue one there to run which is going to be the motors and accessories uh, 16 volt AC I was originally going to do a 12 volt DC, which I have an output there, but then I wasn't even aware and it was hidden from me. I've got a 16 volt AC there, so 16 volt AC is the recommended uh, one, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, and it's just, just an old controller that I've lying around. Um, I think actually I picked this up, um, I've got a load of uh, flexi track, and uh, the guy chucked this in for me when I bought it. I bought that off eBay, so that was, was quite handy. So I've got my solid um, 16 volt AC. Um, and then in one of these lovely boxes here is my DCC controller, which I haven't actually talked you through yet. I've saved that for a, another episode. Um, but yeah, so I've been filming this over a couple of days and just filming bits and bobs. So hopefully this will all come together and make sense in the edit. If, uh, if I haven't explained all, made anything clear please do leave a comment uh, down below and I'll do my best to uh, to answer it um, yeah so I think I'll leave it there for this video um, and in the next video um, I'll hopefully have them all wired up uh, sorry uh, installed and then I'll go through wiring them up um, yeah so thanks for watching and hopefully see you on the next video